Mumra, Origin Explored, Thundercats. The Thundercats are all very powerful. They have the Eye of Thundera powering them up after all. The mutants also seem to be no match for them. However, Mumra is a different story altogether. This menacing supervillain is the primary antagonist of the show and is hell bent on destroying the Thundercats. Mumra! Shares with no one! Give me the sword! For a kid's show, Mumra is portrayed as a character who is way too evil. The entire atmosphere turns super menacing whenever he is on screen. He is constantly scheming and planning to kill off the Thundercats, which is another theme that children's cartoons try not to dive into unless the audience is slightly more mature. But Mumra has no remorse for his actions at all, be it the original Thundercats where he goes from being an Egyptian Sem priest to the undead sorcerer, or in the 2011 reboot where he goes from being an interstellar conqueror to the man behind the destruction of planet Thundera. In today's video, we are going to venture into the backstories of Mumra. Unlike many other villains, he did not have a terrible life that pushed him over the edge. He just happened to be someone who has been evil for from the get-go. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Mumra Backstory Explored Wildstorm comics have ventured into the origin stories of several characters from the Thundercats in Thundercats Origins Heroes and Villains. In this one-shot mini-series, Mumra opens the comics with his story. Before becoming an arch-nemesis to the Thundercats, he used to be a royal aide. It is quite evident that his story takes direct inspiration from ancient Egyptian lore. A man named Wahank mummifies the pharaoh's second-born son. The pharaoh thanks Wahank, who claims that it is only his responsibility to serve the family. He is also acknowledged by the pharaoh for being the most trusted advisor. The pharaoh has plans for Wahank, who he considers to be a part of his family, but he is oblivious to the man's true intentions, which are to overthrow him. Needless to say, this man with a false facade of servitude that hides relentless ambition is Mumra. As Wahank spends time by himself, he complains about the pharaoh's incessant whining. He talks to his pet Martep, who later becomes his pet Marmut, as he claims to put up a mask of being a loyal advisor. But all is good since the pharaoh does not suspect anything. Wahank wants a piece of the kingdom and he plans to take it from the pharaoh by himself. Soon, Wahank uncovers four magical runes with which he intends to summon spirits a lot more powerful than the pharaoh, as each ruin represents one of the ancient spirits of evil. Wahank keeps the runes around a well and activates them to summon the spirits. He offers himself as a servant to the spirits, but he wants something in exchange for his eternal servitude, power. He claims that the pharaoh is weak and squanders his powers. This is why he wants a part of the power of the ancient spirits of evil so that he can overtake the pharaoh despite being a Sem priest. He only asks for a touch of their power, but the spirits are not convinced. They think Wahank is a foolish mortal. They require a good reason for giving such a mortal their power. Wahank comes through with his own proposal. He claims that he will remake the kingdom in their image and act as their vessel for eternity. The spirits consider this to be a good deal and offer a touch of their power to Wahank, but they are unsure whether it is enough to defeat the pharaoh as they say, and for your sake, mortal, hopefully it will be enough power to topple your pharaoh. As Wahank is powered up, the spirits claim that he will cease to exist as the Sem priest. Instead, he will be the immortal wizard Mumra. The power changes Mumra's appearance as he turns blue in color. 
This is not much of a transformation, however, but this is explained as the story progresses. The Pharaoh detects Wahank, who has been dealing with the black arts, as he comes forth to punish him for it. Wahank, now known as Mamra, claims that the Pharaoh does not have enough power over him and forces him to kneel before him. However, the Pharaoh's son soon comes to defend his father and even manages to overpower Mamra. With Mamra surprisingly defeated by the pharaoh's son, he is now to be mummified and buried. The son wanted to burn him in the pyre, but the pharaoh insisted he be mummified for his years of servitude. However, he soon realizes that Mamra could not be killed by cremation anyway, for he is already dead. He points how his mortal flesh has been replaced by necrotic tissue that does not rot. Mamra got his powers from the ancient spirits of evil, but at a terrible cost. He decides to trap Mamra in an onyx tomb for all of eternity, making the option of mummification over cremation a curse instead of a blessing. And the pharaoh's son takes pleasure in that. He is then dropped into the darkness of the tomb, where Mamra calls out to the ancient spirits again, as he cries out, Why have you forsaken me? The spirits call him out on his incompetence and order him to build four huge statues in the Black Pyramid, but only using his withering dead hands. It was a task that would take 600 years, but after that, the spirits would allow him to break free and give him access to power that can defeat any pharaoh. Too bad that by the time Mamra accomplished this task and gained access to becoming Mamra the ever-living, pharaoh ceased to exist. Mumra in the original Thundercats animated series. The original Thundercats animated series portrayed Mumra in a terrifying and menacing manner right off the bat. There was nothing funny about him. No humor was used to lighten up this antagonist. He was practically evil personified. Not like he was a person at all, but you get the idea. He was an undead sorcerer and demon priest, the birth of which we already know of thanks to Wildstorm Comics. He made his first appearance in the second episode of the series known as The Unholy Alliance. While the pilot episode exposed the mutants of Plundar as the villains, the sophomore episode of the show brought forth an alliance between the main bad guy and the mutants, namely Slythe, Jackalman and Monkeyan. Here, Mumra has already built the statues for the ancient spirits of evil. He has his bubbling cauldron, which brims with a pink liquid and allows him to look at the outside world or at incoming threats. He has terrorized Third Earth while living within the confines of his black pyramid. He can occasionally leave the place, provided he summons the ancient spirits of evil to turn into Mamra, the ever-living. As such, the godlike entities use Mamra as their vessel, or rather, as their key to interacting with the physical world. Meanwhile, Mamra has to dedicate his being to their perpetual servitude. He seeks the Eye of Thundera, a powerful Thundarian relic, for which he comes up with a horde of ways to take down the Thundercats, with Lionor's sword having the relic embedded in its hilt. He also does not have the best relationship with his allies, as he expects their betrayal while being completely okay with betraying them himself. What starts off as a ploy to get a relic soon turns into something more personal. Constant defeat at the hands of Lionel and the Thundercats makes Mamra detest them so much that he grows desperate to defeat them in general and rid Third Earth of them. To understand him better, let's get down to the episode where he was first introduced, the Unholy Alliance. It opens with the Thundercats trying to salvage their food rations and equipment from their damaged flagship. That is the ship they used to come to Third Earth from a destroyed Thundera. The ship was destroyed after sustaining two attacks from the mutants of planet Plundar who were after the Eye of Thundera. While Chitara and Tigra go ahead to find a place to build the cat's lair, Lionel decides to scout the surrounding area by himself, leaving Panthro and Snarf behind. Of course, he takes the Sword of Omens and the Claw 
war shield along with him, lest there be any danger. Since Lionel is an overgrown Thundercat with a mind of his 12-year-old self, the other Thundercats believe that it is best for him to scout the place by himself without any aid, since he requires first-hand life experience to mature as the one destined to be the Lord of the Thundercats. Meanwhile, the mutants, Slythe, Monkeyan, and Jackalman are flying in their ship to find Lionel, whose sword has the Eye of Thundera, and to find a suitable spot to build the Castle of Plundar. While examining the terrain of the planet, they come across barren lands of sand with the occasional pyramids. Soon, they find a pyramid more different than the others and onyx in color. The structure emits lightning as the mutants approach it, so they are forced to land since they cannot go any further. The mutants go inside the pyramid where a voice leads them to Mamra, the demon priest. He is a withered wizard who is mummified all over. He also seems to be surrounded by four structures around him, the idols of ancient spirits of evil, while a sarcophagus stands behind him. The mutants and Mumra do not get along at first. In fact, the mutants stand against the wizard. But when Mumra reveals that he is after Lionel's destruction and the Eye of Thundera as well, the mutants realize that they have a common goal. The shared interests do not breed enmity per se, since the Eye of Thundera has enough power for all of them. But before proceeding with it, let Let's talk about the Eye of Thundera to understand why the villains want it so badly. It is the source of the Thundercat's strength. It can sense danger and alert the Thundercats of it. It can be used to send an insignia as a cry for help. It can heal a Thundercat when severely injured. And most importantly, it has this incredible ability called Sight Beyond Sight. This ability helps one see through deceptions and disguises. It can show the past or things that are far away. It can also counter sorcery, black magic, and hypnosis. The catch is, the Eye of Thundera can never be used for evil, so Mumra or the mutants will technically never be able to utilize its powers. But they are unaware of that. They think that it can be useful for them as it is to the Thundercats. Anyway, back to the episode. Mumra offers them to ally with him, but the mutants are against it. They threaten to blow up the Black Pyramid using their weaponry from the spaceship alongside the other mutants. However, Mumra's powers are beyond that of the mutants and he uses his magic to make the ship sink. The mutants witness the imagery via the visions from Mumra's bubbling cauldron, which leaves them with no other choice but to form this unholy alliance. As Lionel wanders through Third Earth, Mumra uses his powers to teleport the mutants from the Black Pyramid to Lionel. Slythe, Jackalman, and Monkeyan start off strong against Lionel, who does not have the necessary experience and skill to fight off three mutants by himself. So, he uses the Sword of Omens to project the Thundercat's insignia as a cry for help. Panthro, Wily Kit, and Wily Cat notice it and immediately head to help Lionel out. With the crisis averted, the mutants are teleported back to the Black Pyramid, leaving the Thundercats unsure about how the mutants were able to pull off such a trick. Back at the Pyramid, Mumra mocks them for failing their mission after talking big. The mutants retaliate by taunting Mumra and his so-called powers prompting the undead sorcerer to show his true power to the new allies. He chants, Ancient spirits of evil, transform this decayed form to Mumra, the ever-living. The four statues around him power up Mumra, turning him into a tall, muscular, and powerful being. He then flies out of his pyramid and heads out to find Lionel. Lionel worries about Tigra and Chitara for they did not respond to the Thundercats insignia. He heads out to find them when he comes across an absurd black lake. He touches the liquid which turns out to be somewhat of a sticky ooze. Soon, the Eye of Thundera begins to alert Lionel of danger and he gears up for battle. He probably thinks it is another mutant attack, but he intercepts Mumra the Ever-Living instead. Mumra knocks the Sword of Omens out of Lionel's hand and into the gooey lake. Lionel manages to procure it fast enough, but the liquid gets to the Eye of Thundera, blocking its sight. At first, Lionel thinks of summoning his allies, but soon decides to handle the crisis alone since since he eventually needs to become the one who safeguards the other Thundercats instead of it being the other way around. 
The fight continues, and Lionel keeps struggling against Mumra's powers. In the process, several trees are knocked down as well. Finally, Lionel is completely cornered and decides to summon the others. But with the Eye of Thundera's vision incapacitated by the Black Ooze, he is unable to use its powers. Lionel is now on the ground, and Mumra heads closer to pin him down and snatch the Sword of Omens away from him. However, Lionel lifts up his claw shield in reflex, which causes a strange turn of events. The shield shines brightly, allowing Mumra to see his ugly reflection. He is stunned by his own appearance and definitely not in a good way as he sees how ugly he truly is or has become. The horrors cause him to retreat back to his pyramid and into his sarcophagus as he gradually loses the form of Mumra, the ever-living, and is reduced to his smaller, mummified appearance. His going into the sarcophagus also gives away the fact that Mumra needs to be in it to replenish his powers. Meanwhile, the mutants mock him for failing. Since Mamra is immortal, he cannot be destroyed per se. He is also cursed in a way with this immortality, as we can see from the end of his origin in the Wildstorm comics. However, in the 61st episode, Lionel does come close to destroying Mamra once and for all. Also, he thinks. To become the Lord of the Thundercats, one has to go through the Anointment Trials. Succeeding in the trials will make them eligible for the title. So after Lionel turned 20, he went through his trials as well. After defeating Panthro in strength, Chitara in a race, outwitting Wily Kit and Wily Cat and cutting through Tigra's illusions, it was time for Lionel's last trial defeating his greatest enemy, and that too unarmed. No other Thundercat in the past had to fight an enemy as powerful as Mamra, making this trial all the more insane for Lionel. Naturally, Mamra soon finds out that Lionel is seeking him out to defeat him. So Mamra sends several obstacles in Lionel's way to prevent him from infiltrating the Black Pyramid and to kill him. Because it's a children's cartoon, he obviously does not say that he will kill Lionel. He just says that by the end of the day, Lionel will be no more. But that tells us about his true intentions. Mamra soon materializes in Castle Plundar in his ever-living form and commands the mutants to intercept and destroy Lionel, who will be unarmed. The mutants take the opportunity to mock him as they ask why Mamra cannot do it himself with his magical powers and with a flick of his finger. It enrages the demon priest and he attacks the mutants hard enough to break their table. It does the job though and the mutants head out to defeat Lionel. The attack on Lionel succeeds to an extent as Lionel is forced to jump into a hole that is subsequently blocked by the mutants, preventing the Thundercat from coming out. Under the ground, Lionel bumps into treasure and learns of where Mumra dwells. He continues to seek the sorcerer out, prompting Mumra to send more obstacles along the way. Lionel stumbles upon the River of Doom and finds a boatman. This part is loosely based on Greek mythology and its whole thing with Charon, the boatman, taking souls to Hades across the river Styx in the underworld. Lionel asks the boatman to take him across the river, but the boatman demands his life force as the price. He touches Lionel, who begins to lose his strength. However, the boat soon topples and both of them fall into the river. The boatman dissolves, but Lionel is able to climb back onto the boat as he grabs the boatman's stick. Mumra is enraged by Lionel's audacity to seek him when disarmed. He soon transforms into Mumra, the ever-living, and sends other obstacles in Lionel's way. However, Lionel is able to navigate through it all and soon reaches the Black Pyramid. When Mamra spots Lionel, he begins to attack him with his magic. Without his weapons, there is not much Lionel can do except dodge Mamra's attacks and throw boulders at him. Of course, the latter cannot do anything to Mamra as he can make the boulders levitate and then break down bigger structures on Lionel. Ultimately, Lionel uses his wits to fight back. Since Mamra's life force is connected to the sarcophagus, Lionel goes for that. He uses his strength to make it crack, which makes him go into a frenzy. Knowing that he has a great trick up his sleeve now, Lionel carries the sarcophagus to Mamra's bubbling cauldron. He then drops the sarcophagus into the cauldron, causing Mamra to wither and disappear with it, as the thing that replenishes his power is now destroyed. This is the first time Lionel is truly able to defeat Mamra, and this 
This is the closest Mumra comes to death. Lionel is eventually crowned to be the Lord of the Thundercats. However, the episode ends with Mamra's voice echoing as he truly cannot be killed. He returns in the second season, this time without a fear of his own reflection, since the ancient spirits have neutralized this weakness of his. The only weakness he continues to have is that of his distance from the sarcophagus as he cannot go too far away from it. Mamra later allies with the lunatics of Planet Plundar, but his relationship with them isn't any better than that with the mutants. In fact, it is worse as the lunatics are a lot more likely to betray Mamra than the mutants. Apart from being in his withered, mummified form and Mamra, the ever-living, he has taken various other forms as well. Starting off with Mamra, the all-powerful, it is what Mamra becomes when he gets all the power from the ancient spirits and becomes stronger than ever before. In the third episode, Burbles, Mamra turns into a giant locust to head to the Burble village to attack Lionel. In a separate episode, Mamra pretends to be an injured Burble to find his way into the cat's lair. Since the Thundercats and the Burbles were friends, he chooses this plan of action. In the episode Pumra, Mamra captures Chitara. Then he takes the guise of a Thundarian Puma called Pumra and pretends to rescue Chitara to win the favor of the Thundercats. In the Garden of Delights, Mamra goes goes against Tigra as he becomes a flowery creature with the face of a human. He then feeds Tigra an addictive fruit to put him under his evil spell. Mamra has taken the forms of Lionel, Panthro and Jaga as well. As Lionel, he tried to fight the original Lionel. As Jaga, he tried to pitch Lionel against the Thundarian trio Bengali, Pumaira, and Lynx O, the other three survivors from Thundera who became honorary Thundercats. Once, he took the form of King Arthur, a king who wielded the most powerful sword called the Excalibur. His intention was to get his hands on Excalibur and use it in a fight against the Sword of Omens. He has taken several other forms as well, often to infiltrate the cat's lair. His story in the 2011 Thundercats reboot of the original 1980s animated series. The 2011 Thundercats animated series followed the route of the original when it came to Mamra's importance as the villain. Once again, he filled the shoes of the main antagonist as a mummified corpse who was powered up thanks to the ancient spirits of evil. And even here, he could turn into his ever-living form. His backstory, however, is quite different. He used to be a conqueror who would travel in his spaceship across the galaxy. He was ambitious in all the wrong ways. He believed that the only way to gain power was by taking it and he wanted the cosmos to be under his command. He cannot achieve this goal without the four power stones. So, he enslaved several animal species to increase the strength of his army. The cats from planet Thundera had also been enslaved and this included Lionel's ancestors. With their help, Mamra got his hands on incredibly advanced technology and went from planet to planet scourging and plundering them to find the power stones. After he got three stones out of four, he destroyed the Star of Plundar and used the remains to create the Sword of Plundar. This sword was equipped to house the power stones, making it a necessary weapon for Mamra to have. However, the star's destruction ended up destroying ten other planets as collateral damage, which became the main trigger that turned and his enslaved army against him. The first Lord of the Thundercats and Lionel's ancestor, Leo, was his trusted lieutenant. Well, he was not the Lord back then. Leo ended up betraying Mamra after the incident with the Star of Plundar, as he embedded the Eye of Thundera, in this case the War Stone, in a sword and created the Sword of Omens. He then used the weapon to destroy Mamra. With the power of the Power Stones, the Sword of Omens and the Animal Slaves uniting against Mamra, the sorcerer was forced to seal himself in a pod. His plan was to escape in it and regenerate. But another Thundercat called Panthera, his second in command, ended up destroying the pod's control panel, trapping Mamra in the pod for centuries. 
Meanwhile, the animal survivors distributed the power stones among themselves and moved on with their lives in order to create new civilizations. With no way out, Mumra contacted another Thundercat named Groon via telepathy. Around that time, Groon and Panthro had been sent to find the Book of Omens, a relic from Thundera's treasure by King Claudus, that is, Lionel's father. Groon was soon offered power by Mumra and he accepted it. But he would only get it if he freed the sorcerer. With Mumra free once again, he set out to find the power stones. Here, the mutants are replaced by lizard men, a race who were oppressed by the Thundarians while being enemies themselves. Lionel, who is empathic towards every creature, helped some lizard men after learning their sad story. However, he was unaware of the lizard men and Mumra being allies. He was also unaware of the level of technology the Lizardmen had access to. Soon, these creatures attacked planet Thundera with Mumra pulling the strings. Thundarians were enslaved and King Claudus was killed. And it was all done to extract the Eye of Thundera from the Sword of Omens. However, Lionel had already escaped with the sword by then. Mumra and the Lizardmen kept pursuing Lionel and the other Thundercats while Lionel was on the search for the Book of Omens. Mumra had also captured Jaga's spirit in a lamp who was later released, but he sacrificed himself to protect the Thundercats against Mumra. Mumra returned while Lionel found the second power stone after learning Leo's story. With Lionel being in Elephant Village, Mumra ordered his underlings to attack that village. However, the spirit stone was in the astral plane, which Tigra managed to enter. Mumra soon used his powers to turn Tigra and Lionel against each other to the point that they would kill one another here. But Lionel got his hands on the spirit stone, which caused the collapse of the astral plane. Later, the Thundercats located the third power stone, this time with Pumaira by their side, who used to be enslaved and a fighter in a place called the Pit. Even though she was raised by Mamra, after he got his hands on her following the invasion on planet Thundera, Pumaira began to show affection for Lionel. Later, Mamra played with Pumaira's life life after the Thundercats got their hands on the sword of Plundar. With Pumaira in danger, Lionel was forced to choose her over the sword. Then allow me to remedy that problem. How can the Thundercats kill Mumra if he is undead? As someone who is already dead, Mumra cannot be killed. He can be defeated, but he always seems to come back. However, it is not uncommon to fight and destroy the undead in fiction. For example, zombies, vampires and the likes can be killed or destroyed. In the case of Mumra, sealing him might be the best option. It does seem to work for hundreds of years until he comes back again. Since he is powered by the ancient spirits of evil, Mumra will continue to exist as long as evil exists. To defeat Mumra forever, one would need to destroy evil forever. And that is not possible. So vanquishing him or sealing him seem to be the best options. The bad thing about the latter is that it won't solve the problem. The good thing about this is that assuming the Thundercats universe is the real world, by the time Mumra returns, he will become another generation's problem. For example, in the 2011 reboot, Mumra is not Leo's problem to deal with anymore. What makes Mumra so deadly? With powers gained from the ancient spirits of evil, Mumra managed to master sorcery and magic. Since he is undead, he cannot be killed either, making him indestructible in battle. He often invokes the ancient spirits of evil to turn into Mumra, the ever-living, which allows him to project bolts of dark energy. He can also fly, project astral planes, control minds, shapeshift and use telekinesis. This form makes him physically stronger while having masterful skills as a swordsman. As a result, he becomes lethal with the Sword of Plundar. When he turned into Mumra, the Dream Master, he was able to enter dreams as well. But he is just a sack of bones and a walking dead body. So without the form of Mumra, the ever-living, he is weak in battle. And the ever-living form is something he can maintain for a short duration, after which he must return to his sarcophagus to kind of recharge his energy and power. So even though he is deadly, there certainly are several ways to get around them. 
It is his ambition and mental resilience that make him so evil. The fact that he spent 600 years making four statues and still continues to seek out power, despite being defeated over and over, makes him a tough nut to crack. On the flip side, maybe he is just stupid to be okay with doing this for an eternity. This master of deception is exceptional at coming up with evil plots and schemes. He has no redeeming qualities or compassion whatsoever, apart from the sympathy he shows for his pet, Ma Mutt. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone! It is done.